I've only got a few days to get ready for my friend's wedding and in true Wood Turner fashion, and Kez fashion, I've left, left it to the last minute, but, and now I credit this idea completely and uh, what I'm about to do to Mike Mahoney. I'm going to make a pair of Sierra wine cups for him and his beautiful wife-to-be. From this beautiful piece of Queensland mango wood, which I thought fits perfectly with this present because we're Queenslanders. So let's head over to the bandsaw. Let's give it a crack. So what I've got here and what Mike shows in his video is a little template like this. It is 90 mil in diameter, so three and a half inches for this little, and that obviously you can see the cup shape there. And then the handle, I've made it uh, two and a half inches or 65 mil long, 25 mil wide. So an inch wide for the little handle. And now before I cut this out, I'm just observing, I'm going over, the, looking around over the top of it, seeing if there's some severe, severe cracks or anything like that. But this piece of mango looks really nice. And uh, this video will be released after their wedding day, obviously, because I want it to be a surprise. Righto, so first things first is we're gonna drill some depth holes. I've just marked it out on my uh, seven mil drill bit. And uh, I've got this beautiful black and decker drill, as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. Just line it up there. We'll see how we go. The, the old maiden voyage of the uh, black and decker. Yes. There we go. I'll show you how, I'll show you that. See, he's got this little switch here, watch. And you're gonna let the handle go all the way forward and then it <laughs> allows you to flick it off. Oh, what a beauty. Right up. just use one of these uh, smaller chucks that I've got. And I sort of give it a shake, make sure it's there. We turn the lathe speed down and just bring it up a little bit. We're just gonna feed it on there. And then let go. <laughs> Feed this guy on. So I'm just gonna true it all up so we've got a blank canvas so we're ready to go. I'm just gonna use the, the 16 mil woodcut bowl gouge and that's sharpened to 55 degrees bevel. And yes, these tips are replaceable so you can unscrew the, you heat it up and unscrew the, the tip. So that's what the, the new tip looks like there when it comes to you in the mail, or whenever, wherever you buy it. Yes, so let's get into it. That's enough talking out there, Keza. We'll start with the turning. So, truing this up. Right. So now I'm just gonna true up this top bit here. So, that looks really nice. Okay. And now I'm not really concerned about a lot of torn grain or anything like that, because a lot of this is actually in the steps that come up after the actual turning. There's actually not as much turning, a little bit of carving and things, so hopefully we can use the electric carver as well. That'll be fun. Uh, I haven't used it yet, because one of my mates came over and he wanted a little tour of the workshop. He was here with his partner and I gave him a little tour and I opened one of the drawers and my car, electric carver was in there. And oh, Nadine was here with us and she's like, 
Oh, what's that new one? Uh, went down like a lead fart, that one. So, uh, yes, we'll have to use it. Even if we turn it on for just a second. Uh, chuck, right. Gonna get this chuck here, the shark jaws. Uh, I'm just gonna measure to the inside, which I've already done. Um, with them slightly open so it clamps down into that, well, a perfect circle or it's always going to be open a little bit because when they cut them when they cut the the jaws they've got to account for the, the blade thickness I think there's actually a proper name for that but they've got to account for that when they're cutting it or machining them so we're just going to open these up here we'll get stuck into it there we go so tool rest at center height we're just going to come to the back here touch it like so Oop, bit to the left there and now Dan, Dan's gonna mark it for us, just so we can, we can all see it. So that'll be the tenon. Lower this down. We'll grab our, grab our 16 mil gouge. Just gonna press in towards that direction, towards the headstock that way. Right, oh, back to the uh, one inch, one inch skew. And now I'm just going to mark the, I'm going to cut the tenon under my arm like this and my uh, strong finger on the top. Now, if anyone is wondering how my finger is going, it's doing really well actually. Um, it just gets a little bit, I think I spoke about this in one of the previous videos, it just gets a bit stiff, obviously. Um, but if you compare that progress there, it's doing really well, sorry, doing really well. What was that game when you're at, when you're at school and if someone looked at the, you got to punch them, remember that? If you look, you look at it, you catch it. <laughs> oh, Kizza. But I think you'd expect that if you chopped it off and they put it back on. Just gotta clean it up. with this little uh, 12 mil gouge. Now I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and so let's hollow it out a bit. I'll just do one now and do the other one with the, with the cameras off. So I'm really looking forward to my mate's wedding. It's gonna be an absolute perler. There's going to be heaps of mates there that I served in the army with. It's going to be, it's going to be great fun. Uh, now I'm going to mount this on here and clamp it down. Now Mike Mahoney marks it up. I think he, did, he, he does about two inches for his cup, our depth drill. It's not going to go all the way. It's about... 10 mil in the bottom there. Bring this guy back over. Not that I need it there, but anyway. Just gives me a bit of support. It helps if the depth drill um, was glued in. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, Keza. Oh, you're killing me. The old vice grips. What do I say? Let's true the face up first. Let's true the face up. Getting ahead of myself. It's not like me, is it? In Mike's video, he uses his uh, spindle gouge. He just drives that banger in there and you know, but he's been turning since I was, before I was born. And it looks quite unsafe, doesn't it? So let's go, let's go back to the other one and see if it's glued in. So I'm just gonna hold my thumb there 
So I know where I'm going. Or how deep. Right. Depth drill done. That one worked. That was hot. Little template here. We could get um, get our drill back. Drill a little little hole. Oh, how good. Oh. Love old old gear, old nostalgic sort of stuff. Get that there, get our depth drill, and then use that, and then we'll be able to see what we're doing. We'll get Dan to mark it up for us. Yeah. And now we'll use the 16 mil to get to get going here. And we'll hollow it out. And I might need to get a scraper as well, but we'll just see how we go. So I want it to sort it on the inside. I want it to go down and sort of curve because not a lot of cups do that. So I want it to do that. That's why I'm sort of, yeah. Doing what I'm doing here. Whee. Can you see that? Oh yeah. Now that move then was the Glenn Lucas special. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, when he has turned closed form bowls and things like that. And now because if you want to try and get to the bottom there, you, you really can't. So what you do, because the tool, the shaft of the tool will be in the way. So you come in, go down, and then raise the tool up. So it keeps cutting, but you've got clearance from this side of the bowl, so where the ruler is, and then as you come to, as you start coming towards the center, that's when you'll that's when you'll complete your cut to the to the base. So I'll show you, because I'm because I'm coming around and making that sort of bulb look that I want the light bulb look without the skinny top, not a pan handle like a you get a light bulb and cut the yeah cut the top off. So come in, go handle down, and then come towards the base, like the Glen Lucas special. It gets you out of a jam or a pickle, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Gonna clean those. Also, when this is spinning as well, because it's because it's starting to take that closed form shape on the inside, so it's got that it's got that sh uh, undercut rim. Got there. Because it's got that undercut rim, the shavings will sit in there. But don't try and put your fingers in there to try and clear them out, because the shavings will hit your fingers, and then you'll go in underneath. And oh, oh don't do it. A bit more. Now my melon's probably in the way there, isn't it? Yep. Come try and right. See how we're looking there. But because I'm feeling a little bit anxious about these, I want to get them right. But shit loads of room, righto. If anyone else has turned a wedding present before. Um, write it in the comments what you've turned. That'll be that'll be pretty cool. That way, give other people some ideas.
Righto. So I'm at my, I'm at my thickness there. And I'm just going to have, what I'm going to do is have a look at the finish. Um, because mango can be quite um, punky. So it can be a, bit, a little bit flaky. But it's all sealed. The grain is completely intact. There's no cracks or anything. Because you don't want to have a drink out of a cracked cup. Go down your shirt. It's, it's got a little bit of torn grain in there. All right, just going to clean that up. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be standing the way I was normally, in a, but because I'm trying to get out of the camera's way, that's feeling a lot better. I might need a broader scraper in that bottom there, something with a little bit more mumbo, but I don't want to keep scraping because it's just going to tear that grain out even more. Yeah, this big, this fellow's a 38 mil scraper. Am I right? Yep, 38 mil. Right, I let's sand it up. Rightio, so I finished the sanding now and I'm going to go back over to the bandsaw but before I do that, uh, because I've curved the inside of the little cup inside there, I'm going to make sure I don't go through the side wall of it when I'm on the bandsaw or I get too close thinking that I'm doing the right thing but I actually won't be because I'll be going to cut inside the cup. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just measure the distance from the inside of the cup to the outside of the cup, and if my thinking's correct, will be, I'm gonna to go to the widest point, which is 50, 50 mil. And then, I had another rule somewhere. Here we go, Lofkin. Right. And then uh, measure the distance from the inside of the cup to the outside of the blank, which is 60 mil. So, you know, I'm just gonna take 10 mil off then, you know and then hopefully that'll make us clear to the widest point if my thinking is correct. Otherwise we'll go, we'll go through the side and that will not be a fun day at all. Better safe than sorry is my thinking. And now I wanna put my little jig back on there, which is down here. So as you can see, it fits into that little hole there just perfectly now. So that's the size we wanted to begin with, and I cut my finger early. I've got me a little band-aid on there. Um, and I'm just gonna mark up the handle, and now Mike Mahoney reckons to go into the end grain for the handle, and that would be the strongest part of the, of the tree, which my thinking is, if you picture the straws analogy, we've all heard of the straw analogy, wood turners. As the tree grows, they grow up like a stack of straws like that, so that would be that into the cup, and that'd be the handle, like so. So that's why I'm thinking that'd be the strongest, strongest section. So I'm not going into the side grain, I'm going into the end grain, and that'd be the strongest st stack of straws to get it nice and strong. So let's go, let's go that way, like so. And now we'll go cut this on the bandsaw. Righto, before we begin, I uh, just wanted to run over what I've got on the lathe here. And now, the reason why I'm, I'll show you, Mike Mahoney has like a cylinder thing here, like if you've ever seen like a drum, big drum sander looking thing, they pass it through and the drum sander hits it, it's in the shape of a cylinder. 
but he has something similar across the bed of his lathe between centers that he hits it. Well, he doesn't hit it. He gets the cup and then sands the cup down to the shape that he wants. I had this thing made up ages ago and I can't exactly remember why I made it, but what we'll do is put it on the lathe like this, just to get a nice platform for ourselves. And it's got this, um, they're a clamp, but I use them because I'm not an octopus and I've got them everywhere around the shed. And I'm gonna use a belt sander instead. I've got 36 grit on there, so hopefully that just rips the timber down really quick for us. We'll give that a go, but I reckon that's as good as it's gonna get. We'll plug it in and see how we go. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I think he drills the holes for the, uh, for the cup. So that is gonna take a heck of a long time to do that. I've got something that I think we could just, it'll save a lot of time for us. Rightio, so I've just put the chuck on the woodcut pry mount here. I've locked it off and I'm thinking of an easier way for myself. Otherwise, I'm just gonna to have to make one of those sander things we're talking about. Put that on there like that. And then expanding the jaws up without damaging our work. Oh, stop it, Kez. And then I can get rid of the bulk like this. Just angle it down, tighten it all up. Oh, stop it. And now I've got, uh, I've got a heap of stuff that I could use, but I really want to just make light work of it. Oh, this is the, this is the chisel. This is the chisel we have to use to make sure Dino knows that, um, that we used it. I'll show you, it's super cool. How cool is this? Watch this. It's pretty cool, eh? Righto, we've used it. But you might have all seen this guy here when I first uh, made that video on removing tenons. So we'll give this guy a crack. I might have to set the dust collector up again. We'll just see how we go. I think dust collector needs to go on. You raise me up so I can climb on mountains. How's that? Right, not blocking your view, eh? No.
So I've got the cup down to its sort of rough looking shape now, and now I'm gonna start doing the handle. Um, and I'm just gonna trace it out first before we continue on because I don't wanna get, get too far then have to come back, back and then do all the sanding again. So I wanna do, I reckon, I like like a bigger handle, but I don't wanna remove too much material because if I do that, it'll weaken it. The pencil wasn't sort of cutting the mustard, but you can sort of see what I'm getting at. I just, we'll do the outside line. So we'll go outside line. We'll go, we'll go something like, like that. So that'll be the extremity. And then we'll, I wanna keep a fair bit of timber because it's, it's quite a big cup, so. But we might have to actually bring that down and curve it. This is what I'm really liking about this project is that you can get really creative with it and sort of the only limitation is your imagination as far as you can take it, if that makes sense. It sounds like something out of Disney, but anyway. So I'm gonna to get to carving that and how I'm gonna do it, I've got my little, how I'm going to do this is I've got this little magnet down here. So I've got this guy here who's a pretty aggressive little burr carver thing and that guy there. So I'll use those two and I got them on the magnet so I don't drop them or, or lose them. Mike Mahoney first starts by drilling a couple of holes, so we'll do that. And that'll help me punch, punch through and get all that timber out. And obviously you don't wanna be drilling on the, on the piss because you'll drill into your, <laughs> into your cup. I'll just have to check then. I got a big boy drill bit. Whoa. Goes up. Right, righto, let's get into it. So in order to get this base nice and flat and even, I'm just gonna put it back on the lathe um, and I'm just gonna do this gently because I don't want anything to crack or scratch. So these shark tooth teeth jaws, the shark tooth jaws are good because they're nice and just straight um, and I'm gonna be able to hopefully keep it running fairly true. But now I'm gonna have to watch out for this handle as it spins around, but this is Mike, Mahoney doesn't do this, but this is the only way that I sort of, sort of could think of because I've played with the tenon there now. I've flattened it off a bit at the base and I've sanded it. And so I don't know what is exactly flat on the bottom. So I want to get it perfect. And this way I'll be able to create a really nice little base for it. And then I'll know it'll sit perfectly on the table when it's got some liquids in it and it won't rock around. That's the important part. So I'm just gonna to have to see how this goes. It's gonna be a little bit wild. Right. Now I want the base about there. No, about there.
So I've got the second one on the lathe now and I'm about to, so this will be the bride's cup because it's a little bit more fancy and uh, a little less rugged and a little bit more finesse in this one. Not saying that the first one didn't have finesse, but it's a little bit more rugged, the first one, a little bit more mountaineering, if that's a thing for a cup. So I've got it with a bit of a uh, shop towel there and I've got this little uh, felt, little disc that I'm just going to put in front of the, the cone center there just to support it. So it's not gonna go anywhere whilst it's on the lathe. Cause all I'm going to do right now is just fix this foot up. So this is obviously the most daunting part of the whole exercise. So we'll just start with a slow speed. Add a bit of detail like that. Nothing too fancy, I'm just going to get the skew. Don't get excited. Just going to check, make sure it's sitting nice and flat and that we can see daylight underneath. Righto, so I'm just going to sign this piece now. This is called the Trade Flame. People asked me about it in my previous video. But, um, and that's the tip there, if you can see that. I'm not going to touch it, but that's the... What, hold on here. That's what the tip looks like. And I bent that up myself because I like the, the flowing effect of, of the way it signs. Position myself nice and even across the bench. And we're going to start with this, the species. Sometimes I hold the lead up so it doesn't sort of flop down on the ground and move anything out of your way that's gonna disrupt the flow, the creativity flow. So we've got a bit of Queensland mango. And that's getting hot on my fingers. Now, this is going to help old, old, old Leo out when he forgets because we all forget sometimes. What a wonderful year, eh? in keeping with um, Mike Mahoney and his Tusker bowls. I'm just gonna put it in there and make it easy for myself. Queensland mango, look how beautiful that is. See how it's got that golden Beautiful look, and when you turn it, it actually smells sweet. It's got a real sweet smell to it. So I never thought I would turn a set of cups before, but uh, I just want to quickly say thank you to Mike Mahoney for putting the tutorial online here on YouTube. Uh, there was many times I was running back to the phone to check, but uh, everyone else go check that video out. I highly recommend it. But uh, thank you so much, Mike, and. Here's to the bride and groom. I wish you guys 
all the best and happiness that life can ever give you. So I uh, can't wait to give you guys your cups tomorrow. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I know which one Leo's going to grab and his wife's going to grab. So yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. So cheers guys. Thanks so much for watching and uh, yeah, talk to you all directly.